Hi, this is Scott Hendricks, and today I want to talk to you about the fabrication numpad. I know what you're thinking. What the heck is a numpad? Well, the numpad is an on-screen input device. Let me show you. First thing we're going to need to do is modify our ribbon. This does work in CAD. It's just a little different uh, procedure. In CAD, at the command line, you'll just type numpad. In EST, we're going to need the button to turn the numpad on and shut it off. So to get that into the ribbon, we're going to go to our database and on our utility bar, we're going to push a numpad over. So now we, we have the numpad here and I'll click on it to turn it on and you can see here, here's our, our numpad. And how we use this thing uh, is that I'm going to set it over, over here. And uh, I'll just warn you, setting it inside of your drawing area is not a good idea. Uh, your clicks tend to go like all the way through the numpad to, to your drawing area. So I'm going to move this one over here to the bottom of my uh, service palette. And we're going to start up a design line and we're going to use this numpad. So I have a size 36 by 22 here. So I'm going to put 36 and tab over to the next size and 22. And then tab over and set my elevation. And then come in and draw. That's kind of how the numpad works. But what gets really interesting with the numpad uh, is if we could just dock it and make it a permanent part of our design line interface. Well, you can. To do that, first thing we're going to do is we need to bring up the console by holding shift Control c and then type in edit numpad and hit enter and it'll bring up our numpad editor. And what we'll do first off is we're just going to save this numpad editor. And we need to save it into the same folder as our map INI. And name it speedpad. So once that's saved, uh, I'm going to cancel out of here. And we will, we will need to, to reboot EST. So I'm going to close EST. And start it back up. All right, so with EST started back up, uh, again, we'll turn on our, our numpad and start our design line. And notice, there's nothing here. Where's our speed pad? To turn it on, you're going to have to go to View, and then use speed pad. And there we go. Now our, now our numpad, whether it's on or whether it's off, always stays here in our uh, design line interface. And it can be used the same way. So we'll start a new design line and put in 36, tab 22, tab 144, and draw our line. So that's pretty fast. Um, I didn't think I would like it at first, but I kind of like not having to look down at my keyboard to type in numbers, being able just to click on my screen. But after playing with it a while, there's a lot more that can be done with it because there's something besides just the speed pad. You'll notice that down here, just below the speed pad, was a size pad. And let me show you how the size pad works. So first I'm going to bring up the numpad again and then bring up my uh, console and then my numpad editor. And we're going to create a new one, a new numpad. And we're going to name this one size pad. And we'll just start off small for right now. We're just going to say that this is, say, 4 and 4. 
and 32 pixels is the size of each button and then the gap we want in between them how many pixels we want in between um, each uh, button all right so there's our new size pad if we right click we can add put a new button on that size pad and let's make this one 36 and we can choose the size of it they don't have to be square you can make them different sizes like you see over here on this numpad the enter is two, uh, two buttons tall and we're going to put in here 36 but then we want it to move automatically to the next uh, size or to the next uh, input cell so I'm going to put in a tab there so 36 and tab are the key presses and as you're building these you can even use your own images for the button it to change the looks of it if you do not use an image then it's going to use the description it's going to just put that text right on the button uh, so I'm going to click OK and now we got one for 36 all right now let's add one more for our 22 button so I'm going to right click add a new button this one's 22 Oops. Yeah, 22 and tab on this one also all right we got the start of our size pad here we're going to go ahead and save this same location next to our map i and i and we're going to name this one size pad you do name need to name them exactly like this this is how the program will recognize it and pick it up so we'll save our size pad and let's go ahead and we'll restart us again to see our changes all right we're back so we'll start up our design line and turn on our new size pad there we go 3622 all right test these buttons our size is 36 by 22 and we're at 144 all right that got a little better saved us a few clicks so if we continue to add common sizes here uh, we can make this thing work really fast let's take a look at some that I've already built so that you can see what they look like in action to kind of get an idea of of how this can really speed up your process all right you can see we got a lot more buttons in here so let's go ahead and set our size where 36 by 22 elevation of 144 and then we go to 32 by 22 30 by 18 so you can see that that's pretty slick now in the building of it uh, since it's just recording keystrokes I had this idea you know that our utility bar up here our ribbon is not customizable it's been one of my complaints since the since they brought the the ribbon into est that I can't customize it the way that I can in uh, in fabrication and if you've been running est you know that there's a lot more commands than there is buttons they've given us an interface for it with all the commands that we could run but no buttons for these so in building those numpads I thought hmm what if I made a numpad that just had commands on it instead of numbers and so that's what I built and I got a few examples here for you of some of the commands that I like that don't have buttons for them like fill between two ends if I bring in a piece of duct put it here put in another piece of duct put it here and I need to fill that between those two places I'll click my F2E button and fill from there to there and there we go I got a nice fill between two ends button 
Um, node stretch. If I needed to move this offset over a little bit, I can select my items here and hit my NSTR button. Select the nodes that I want to move and slide them down. Okay, fewer keystrokes. Now I put all of this in at right at, at zero. I didn't give it an elevation when I put it in, um, but with uh, this button, well, I can select those items and then tell it to go up to 144. And now if I take a look at it, you can see that uh, the center of my duct is now at 144. Uh, there's also a great filter in here. Uh, I have been using um, <clears throat> the filter over here in my workspace and I get a little frustrated with it sometimes. There's not all the options that I wanted. Um, but there's a great filter already built in here that we had in CAD. I didn't realize it was in, realize it was in here until I started looking through all of these commands and I found my filter. And so there's my filter button that I can do my filtering with. So whatever commands you like <clears throat> um, in S that you want to make a button for, uh, you can make a button for and string those out to cut down the amount of keystrokes that we have to do in a day. That's, uh, that's a little bit about the numpad, how we can build custom ones and even kind of build our own custom toolbar you know, using the numpad interface. Uh, hope this helps you out and gets your job done a little bit quicker.